What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. About a doctor in, in Gaza who saw his entire family wiped oh, out, yeah. except yeah. for one girl. Yes, I know this, this doc, Alessi, can you pull this up? Piers Morgan, Piers Morgan, Palestinian doctor family. And what happened was his building was hit with a rocket and they killed, he has like eight kids. They killed like three of his daughters. They killed nieces, whatever. And he was calling in as he was finding the bodies. Go ahead and play it, Alessi. Call to a doctor in Gaza who's been reporting daily for an Israeli station. His three daughters have just been killed. They've killed his family, he says. I think I'm a bit overwhelmed too. He then explains that Dr. Abul Aish is a Palestinian physician who's worked for years at an Israeli hospital. Who was hurt, he asks. My God, my girl, Shlomi, can't anybody help us, please? He has eight children, the journalist explained. Maybe we can do something to help. Abu Laish, where is your house? The cameras then follow the journalist as he tries to use his contacts to send ambulances to help the survivors. Incredibly, he succeeds. The Israeli army allows a Palestinian ambulance to go straight to the Eretz border crossing. From there, the injured are transferred onto Israeli ambulances and taken to Israeli hospitals. That's him. Among them, mm. one of the daughters who survived. <laughs> For the most part of this 22-day war, Israeli journalists were not allowed to report from inside Gaza. And Dr. Abul Aish, a Hebrew speaker, was one of the rare voices bringing the reality of the Palestinian suffering into the Israeli living rooms. Everybody in Israel knows that I was talking on television and on the radio, that we are at home, that we are innocent people. Suddenly today, when there was hope for ceasefire, on the last day I was talking to my children, suddenly they bombed us. Is that how you treat a doctor who takes care of Israeli patients? Is that what's done? Is this peace? Right, that's good, Alessi. Now, remarkably, this guy has such a... I'm so glad you brought him up. He has such an amazing outlook that he's like a peacemaker. Yeah. But... Guys, if you're not following me over on Instagram, my personal page is at Julian D. Dory, and the podcast page is at Julian Dory Podcast. Both links are in the description below. I'm trying to build that out. I've never focused on it before, but it's important that obviously I get the fans over there because we announce a lot of things pertaining to the show. So I hope to see you follow me there. Check the links in the description. Clinic for, for, pedi pedi uh, for pediatrics and um, but was radicalized by fighting in Gaza in 2008. And so it ends up becoming, um, you know, eventually a, a volunteer for Al Qaeda. Mm. And, uh, this is someone who's educated. He speaks English. He's, he's Western in many ways, but it is possible and pretty predictable that if, if uh, people are exposed to trauma like that, they, they look for ways to strike back. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's in lethal ways. And that's what happened in the case of the triple agent. Absolutely. How, how do you, I mean, you said right at the outset of this part of the conversation, you're like, well, Hamas, and at some point it's, it might be going away. Do, do you see this ending as not until Israel has wiped Hamas off the earth? They're going to have to be satisfied that, that Hamas can't have political control, at least in the, in the near future. And I don't know exactly how they manage that because they don't want to own Gaza. That's just a horrible outcome for, mm -hmm. for them. Um, the The best that that I think people can hope for is that there's that the Arabs collectively the, the the Gulf states with their money the so the Palestinians the Jordanians West bankers and others can come up with a with a formula for you know some kind of governance uh, that excludes Hamas and they're gonna have to be very careful about how they do that um, but there can't be a Hamas you know, any kind of real Hamas authority left in Gaza for there to be any kind of peaceful outcome. I think until that group is is really driven out or driven underground, as is sometimes is the case, the Israelis aren't going to give up because they they want to see them absolutely crushed.
And it's interesting. I think most most people in the region who who are kind of favor a two state solution all kind of recognize that two state solution is is not possible with Hamas in control of right. any any part of of Palestinian territory. Um, so it's it's the most complicated, difficult operation that you can imagine. But that's the only way that you can begin to have a sense of some kind of normalcy is if it's, it's, there's a, another a, a governing authority in that area that doesn't have the same kind of radical aspirations that Hamas does and but yet has legitimacy with people and that's that's a lot of a lot of needles to thread sure thank you for watching the video guys if you haven't already subscribed please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below